everyone, welcome back to Keeper Tips with Mini Beast Wildlife. I'm Caitlin Henderson and I'm going to be showing you how to look after the St. Andrew's cross spider, which has some serious talent when it comes to using silk. Their name comes from the X shape they make in their webs. They build a silk decoration called a stabilimentum, which in most species is cross shaped. And it has a role in attracting prey, but also protecting the web from damage by things like birds. The spider sits in the center of the web with its eight legs held in pairs, so it becomes part of the cross. Females are normally big with bright colors and stripes, but males are small and dull, which is something we see a lot of in the orb weaving spiders, and females live for around a year. These spiders are found all over Australia, but we're going to be looking at the tropical St. Andrew's cross today from northern New South Wales and Queensland. To keep these spiders, you'll need an enclosure suitable for web building, access to live feeder insects, and a misting bottle. I also recommend a trusty pair of forceps or two. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to set up and look after these spiders using the Mini Beast Wildlife St. Andrew's Cross Spider Kit. And I will put a link in the description if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself. The kit comes with a small pop-up enclosure, a misting bottle, and a juvenile female spider. The great thing about these pop-ups is that they are the perfect size for these webs. They're super well ventilated and they have this zipper access, which is really cool, which gives you a good chance of getting in there without destroying the web. When your spider arrives, the first thing you wanna do is pop up this enclosure. I'll open it up and I'll open up our spider just here. Now, they can go for a bit of a run, but they're not too fast. She should just be hanging out on the fern in here. If she does get on your hand, it is no big deal. They're not dangerous, but I will chuck her in here now just gently. She'll be able to easily climb the mesh walls, which is great, and she'll get her web built overnight. The stabilimentum isn't added straight away or even all the time, so don't worry if it's missing. My personal favorite way to keep these spiders is in an open Y frame. I'd recommend this to more advanced keepers, so if it's your first or weaver, stick with the pop-up. But we are working on making these available, so hit us up if you are interested. To get the web started on this frame, you wanna drop your spider off on one side, let her attach her silk. If you see her wiggling her abdomen, that means she's doing it. After she's done that, we'll pick her back up again and we will transport her to the other side nice and slowly or we will break her silk. She has to let it out as she goes. She's going to attach it on that side. Once we see her wiggle her abdomen, that means she's done it again. And what I like to do is just gently tap her back along her line so we know that she has it secure. Overnight, she should build her web between these two sticks, but keep her in a secure room in case she nicks off somewhere else to do it. And if she does, make sure to feed her in a new web before you move her back to the frame to try again, because web building takes a lot of energy and resources. Keep in mind that these spiders will move their webs under some circumstances, so always keep the frame somewhere secure overnight where you'll be able to find your spider again if she does rebuild. If that happens, they do like to hang out near windows, so my first place to look is always behind the curtains. Feeding these spiders is a lot of fun. Their metabolism is faster than some other commonly kept spiders such as tarantulas and trapdoors, and that means they're gonna be more active and they're gonna eat more often. This web is most adapted to catching flying insects. So in the pop-up mesh enclosure, it is possible to catch something like a fly or a moth and just let it go inside or toss it into the web. But to keep it simple, I like to feed my spiders crickets that I can buy from the pet shop. If the prey is something that won't fly into a web or you're feeding a spider in a Y-frame, grab a pair of forceps and hold the insect by the very back. You normally wanna feed your spider something about one third the size of her body or smaller. She can catch large prey, but she won't feed for a while after. Gently place the insect into the web and give it a little wiggle to make sure it's trapped on those sticky threads. If the web is nice and sticky, you can also just toss an insect in and it will often get caught straight away. When the insect starts to struggle, the spider will sense the vibrations through her feet. She'll run down to the prey and start wrapping it in a thick swathe of echinoform silk, which is the same stuff she uses to make her stabilimentum. She'll bite larger prey and inject her venom, heading back to the hub of the web to wait until the insect is subdued before she comes back to collect it. But smaller prey, she'll drag that straight up to the center of the web with her, beginning to feed on it there. 
You'll need to feed your spider around twice a week. Keep an eye on the abdomen. If it gets small and skinny, you'll need to give your spider more food. If it's getting quite large and round, then leave her be. You'll also need to give your spider's web a daily spray with your misting bottle. This only needs to be a light mist, just leaving some water droplets on the web for her to drink and preventing it from getting too dry in here. That's very important for when she molts. These spiders should generally be kept between 18 to 26 degrees Celsius, so a comfortable temperature for you is a comfortable temperature for them. If it does start to get down below 10 or above 30 for more than a short period of time, you will need to think about heating or cooling the room that they're in. But with any climate control, mist spraying and keeping up that hydration becomes extra important. As she grows, your St. Andrew's cross spider will molt off her old exoskeleton and grow a new one a number of times. And this mostly happens at night, so you might not see it. But if you do, it can look like she's died and is hanging out of the web. But when you look closer, you'll see she's actually hanging from a silk line and pumping away free from that old skin. And the next morning, that'll be lying on the ground, discarded, it's quite light and transparent. Tropical St. Andrew's cross spiders lay eggs that they wrap up inside a fluffy dark green egg sac and hang beside the web. They'll lay these eggs whether they've made it or not, but they won't hatch unless you've paired your female up with a male. And they can make several egg sacs over a period of months. So that's our tips for keeping the St. Andrew's cross spider. Remember to like this video and follow or subscribe for more info on keeping invertebrates. And check out the rest of our channel for our videos on other Australian mini beasts.